dear friend. St. Augustine is the oldest city in the United States. It was here on St. Augustine's Day, August the 28th, 1565, that Pedro Menendez de Aviles first sighted land. In 1965, it will celebrate its 400th anniversary. Indeed, it has requested federal funds to enhance this historic observance. This small, neatly kept Florida community will long be remembered as a symbol of a harsh, rigidly segregated, clan-dominated, backward-looking city which mocked the spirit of the Doe African-born, dark-pigmented priest for whom it was named. Most visitors stop at the slave market, supposedly only a relic of bygone days. True, they no longer sell slaves in that market, but let no one be deceived into thinking that there no longer exists. Among the town's white residents, the mental attitude and the psychology, which first put slaves on those trading blocks. The spirit of racial arrogance persists and is reinforced by the sway of terror long exerted by hooded and unhooded mobsters. We went to St. Augustine in response to the appeal of Martin Luther King, addressed to the Central Conference of American Rabbis Convention in which he asked us to join with him in a creative witness to our joint convictions of equality and of racial justice. We came because we realized that injustice in St. Augustine, as anywhere else, diminishes the humanity of each of us. If St. Augustine is to be not only an ancient city, but also a great hearted city, it will not happen until the raw hate, the ignorant prejudices, the unrecognized fears which now grip so many of its citizens are exorcised from its soul. mainly because we could not stay away. We could not say no to Martin Luther King, whom we always respected and admired, and whose loyal friends we hope we shall be in days to come. We could not pass by the opportunity to achieve a moral goal by moral means, a rare modern privilege, which has been the glory of the nonviolent struggle for civil rights. We came here because we could not stand uh, quietly by our brother's blood. Time when silence has become the unpardonable sin of our time. We came as Jews who remember the millions of faceless people who stood quietly watching the smoke rise from Hitler's crematorium. We came because we know that on second only to silence. The greatest danger to man is a loss of faith in man's capacity to act. Here in St. Augustine, we have seen the depths of anger, resentment, and fury. We have seen faces that express deep and implacable hatred. What disturbs us more deeply is the large number of decent citizens who have stood aside, unable to bring themselves to act, yet knowing in their hearts that this cause is right and that it must inevitably triumph. We believe in man's ability to fulfill God's commands with God's help. We make no messianic estimate of man's power and certainly not of what we did here but it has reaffirmed our faith in the significance of the deed. So we must confess in all humility that we did this as much in fulfillment of our faith and in response to inner need as in service to our Negro brothers. We do not underestimate what remains to be done in the North as well as in the South. In the battle against racism, we have participated here in only a skirmish. But the total effect of all such demonstrations has created a revolution, and the conscience of the nation has been aroused as never before. Baruch Atah Adonai Matir 
Blessed art thou, O Lord, who freest the captives. And it's signed Rabbi Eugene Borowitz, Rabbi Balfour Brickman, Rabbi Israel Cy Tresner, Rabbi Daniel Fogel, Rabbi Gerald Goldstein, Rabbi Joel Hoover, Rabbi Joseph Herzog, Rabbi Norman Hirsch, Rabbi Leon Chick, Rabbi Richard Levy, Rabbi Eugene Lippmann, Rabbi Michael Robinson, Rabbi B.T. Rubenstein, Rabbi Murray Saltzman, Rabbi Alan Setcher, Rabbi Clyde T. Sills, and Mr. Albert Forsman. Those names were pronounced by personal friends of the rabbis who signed this document. Again, it informs us today and speaks to us with the overnight news from uh, uh, Charleston, South Carolina. I saw the painting. I loved it. And your name is? Kate Merrick. Okay. And uh, how long did it take you to paint that painting? A few weeks, off and on. And the painting we're talking about is a painting that you did of uh, the rabbis writing that letter all together in that cell on that early morning hours, 3 a.m., I believe. Um, the letter's very touching. It is. It had a profound emotional effect on me, which affected the painting. Right. Especially with what happened in South Carolina uh, yesterday. This event is just brings us back to the point that it's not over. And there's a lot of work to be done. A lot of work to be done. I thank you very much. That is a beautiful, that is a masterpiece in my, in my eye. Thank you. And uh, I thank you. My pleasure.